A long time ago, in a television studio far, far away, Star Wars, the holiday special, the first of its kind, the reaction was not kind. Chewbacca and his family were slaughtered by critics, audiences, and just about anyone with a pulse. Since that darkest of dark days in 1978, there have been multiple attempts to bring the cinematic saga to the small screen. Droids, The Clone Wars, The Mandalorian, all unsuccessful until now. Ahsoka is a revelation, a sensation, a jubilation. It is the coronation of a new queen, the start of a new scene, a bold new beginning for Star Wars. Here is how Ahsoka is the best Star Wars show ever. The Mandalorian, the book of unfettered masculinity, Obi-Man Kenobi, Mandor, the list of male-dominated Star Wars TV shows is as long as a Rancor's fingernails. 50% of the galaxy is female, 100% of the limelight is male. Despite Kathleen Kennedy's stellar work on the Star Wars movies, the Force's female movement never transitioned to TV. Strong, independent women characters were forced to wait on men or wait their turn. Not anymore. Ahsoka's heroes are not heroes, but she rose, she rules. After years serving as animation eye candy or making cameos in bit part roles, the titular protagonist steps into the binary sunlight as the hero we deserve. She has balls, brains, and can even outrun a nuclear bomb. She may have the running form of a middle-aged woman running for a bus to Tesco, but when she does arrive, there is no man or droid alive who can hang with the bang. Whoever said women are emotional creatures is wrong. Her soaker is devoid of any emotion or feeling, which she ably demonstrates in every lifeless scene. Where do you call home these days? This ship serves me fine. Don't you ever get tired of moving from one place to another? I go where I'm needed. Sabine Wren, a 28-year-old teenager. She says no to authority and hell yes to insane, high-octane motorcycle fun faster than a blaster gun. Sabine the machine stops for no man, no woman, but she does stop for cute furry little cats with duck legs. When it's time to feed her Tuka, get out of the way, or you'll play snooker with your life. She's no wife, no girlfriend, she's Ahsoka's former apprentice. And like her Tangi Tano master, she has more balls than a Pokemon master. At first, she tells Ahsoka to get lost, but by the end of episode two, she gets a haircut. Queen Sabine is back, baby, with a bang. Who the hair is this? It's Hera Syndulla, played by Scott Pilgrim's girlfriend, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Why marry a legendary Star Wars character when you can become one? Bib Fortuna looks like he had the misfortune of being born in a Sarlacc pit. Hera looks like She-Hulk's hot sister. Behind every strong woman is another strong woman. As Winstead tells Entertainment Weekly, What I love about her is that she's such a strong leader and fighter, and she's also so maternal and nurturing. We don't often see that depicted on screen. We see army generals being these very masculine hard figures. Harsh but fair words about her husband. If Anakin had a master like Hera, he would never have turned to the dark side. He'd have turned to Hera for some warm milk and cookies. Darth Vader, the Emperor, and the Emperor again. Star Wars wouldn't be Star Wars without iconic villains. Who is Ahsoka's ultimate foe, her arch nemesis? In a show like Ahsoka, there is only one way to go. Nope, guess again. That's right, Norma Bates from The Mandalorian Season 3 is back as Morgan Elsbeth. Space prison, a space paper bag. She is free within minutes and free to craft an evil plan to restore the Empire. Third time lucky for the Emperor, somehow this time he will not return. 
A new plan is born, the return of Grand Admiral Thrawn, a galactic cross between Thanos and Pee Wee Herman. What's the one thing that can stop a blue man from ruling the galaxy? An orange woman with two tails on her head. Ahsoka is waiting, sucker. Twenty years ago, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Anakin was the chosen one. Why was he chosen? Because he was a he. Women Jedis were on the sides of milk cartons. Missing, and if they were found, they were found dead in blink and you'll miss it montages. In 2015, Rey paved the way for a new generation of Jedi. Jedi without tails between their legs, but tails on their heads. Dark lords, but with dark young ladies ready to replace them. The Force is female, and so is the dark side. Shin Haiti, Shin sexism, kicks misogyny in the balls, and cuts through the white male privilege like a hot laser sword through Luke Skywalker butter. One suspects she'll betray her dark side brethren like Reva, for those side eyes cannot be ignored, but for now, she is a formidable foe for the orange glow and the purple bob. Who's this? The token white man. On first impressions, one mistakes Balan Skull for a Sith Lord, but within minutes, it is established Balan Skull is Balon Skrull. He wears the face of a badass bad guy, but acts like a cook old Jedi. Morgan does the ordering, Shin does the ass kicking. Balan's role is Baywatch. Watch the babes make waves. The only characters with less screen time other white men, for in the age of televisual enlightenment, the lighter the male, the lighter the workload. If Balan does not feature in any future episodes, he would not be missed, because he barely exists. Ahsoka is the greatest game ever made that is not a game. Throughout the show, the compulsion to pick up a controller is ever present. Ahsoka is PlayStation VR, just without the PlayStation or the VR. All the puzzles feel like they have fallen straight out of Jedi Fallen Order. Running, hit L3. Lightsabers, hit square. Dialogue, make a choice. You never made things easy for me, Master. There is nothing easy about being a Jedi. The key difference between a session on PlayStation or an hour watching Disney Plus, Ahsoka is stuck on story mode. Everything comes so easy to the Tangerine Tano and her Blue Rin's apprentice that the only drama comes from wondering whether the Mandalorian will put on her helmet or get a haircut. What do real Star Wars games look like? They look like the planet Hoth. Whiter than a Wampa, more male than a Minox sucking on the Millennium Falcon. A privileged white male Jedi jumps from planet to planet to free the galaxy from tyranny, yet on board his own ship, every species, every woman, every minority man takes a backseat so he can be the star of Star Wars. One can only hope that one day Kathleen Kennedy also brings truth, justice and the Disney way to the virtual Star Wars universe. In the history of Star Wars television, there has never been a show like Ahsoka. The holiday special, a farce of the Force, the Clone Wars, the Clone Wars, the Mandalorian, all man until Bo-Katan. Ahsoka sets light to the old ways and lights a path are a new way forward, a forward way in which women are all the heroes, all the villains, and all that matters. All hail the best Star Wars show ever. Well then, I'll be on the ship. <laughs>